hi folks welcome to my youtube channel so in this video and in all upcoming videos we will discuss about some most common renal cell carcinomas so starting from the most common renal cell carcinoma so the most common renal epithelial cell tumor which comprises 65 to 75 percent of the renal cell tumors is the clear cell tumor so histologically or the microscopically, this tumor has the alveolar type of growth pattern or the nested type of the growth, growth, uh, growth pattern in which it contains the cancer cells, which has the clear cytoplasm. So because of this, this tumor is also known as the clear cell carcinoma. And when we will discuss about the microscopically, we will discuss about why uh, why it appears as a clear cells and why it is called as clear cells. So the most common case, age of appearance of this tumor is age, around the age 40. And predominantly, this is seen in the age, sixth and the seventh decade of the life. In terms of male to female ratio, it is more common seen in the males compared to the females. While discussing about the etiology and the pathogenesis of this tumor, so the etiology lies in when there is a mutation in the VHL gene. This gene is located at the short of, of arm of the chromosome 3 or when there is a loss of the chromosome 3 itself. And this tumor is virtually present in all the cases of the bone hippo Lindown syndrome. And when this tumor is sporadically uh, it is not associated with the von hippo lindau syndrome. It is mainly unilateral and could, could be unifocal as well. But when it is associated with this syndrome, it is commonly solid and it is bilateral. While in discussing about the pathogenesis of this tumor, normally physiologically, the VHL gene, when it is transcripted and translated, it produces a pro protein which is called as a PVHL, which is required, which is which is required to target and to degrade the hydroxylated form of the hypoxic induced factor one in the normal uh, when the oxygen saturation is the normal. But whether there is a mutation in the VHL gene or there is a loss of the chromosome 3, so this normal protein is not formed and there is no degradation of the hypoxic induced factor 1. So when it is overexpressed, it activates down the line a lot of secondary molecular messengers, which includes the common ones are the VEGF, GULT1, CA9. EDGF and PDGF, PDGF. So down the line, these will, these will activate a lot of molecular chain uh, configurations and ultimately it will lead to the initiation of the clear cell renal cell tumor. So discussing about the clinical features, most commonly it present as a classic trial of the flank pain, pain uh, flank mass pain and the hematuria. And it is commonly when any person of the older age present with the uh, history of a mass. So the most commonly, uh, uh, most commonly patient is suffering from any tumor processes. And discussing about the gross feature, uh, is uh, uh, gross feature. If we go into the before we go into specifically about the clear cell carcinoma, whenever if you are working on the surgical bench and if you determine that the nephrectomy has been performed because of the malignant tumor or suspicious of the malignant tumor, always remember before you bivalve it, always try to see whether the tumor is involving the capsule or the gerota fascia or not because it will change the uh, staging of the tumor completely and while going specifically to the uh, clear cell carcinoma it can be present as a cystic mass unilocular cystic mass or it can present as a solid nature and when it is sol present as a solid nature this is commonly as a present as a round to oval and it contains has the special color of a golden to yellow color so the golden to yellow color is because it contains the high amount of the lipid into it. Because of the high amount of the lipid, that this tumor has this type of characteristic. And 
when we section it, when we uh, send it for the histology, because of the histological processes of the formalin fixation, alcohol fixation, all the lipid has been wiped out. When the all the lipid has been wiped out, so microscopically, when we see the tumor under the microscope, it appears as a completely clear cell, a clear cell variety. Or simply, it simply means that the lipid in the cytoplasm has been wiped out because of the histological processes. So basically, it is an artifact that the tumor appear as a clear cells. So let's discuss about the microscope or the histology. So from this power, we can completely see that the tumor has the architecture of the nested or the alveolar type of the pattern. And inside it, it contains the cancer cells, which has the nucleus in the center, while the cytoplasm around this whole cell is cleared out and this whole tumor is appear as the clear. So that is the reason it is called as the clear cell renal cell carcinoma and all the lipid inside the cancer cells have been wiped out because of those histological process. So basically it is an artifact. So after we diagnose the clear cell renal cell carcinoma, so the next step comes to grade the tumor. So the grading depends on the visibility and the prominence of the nuclei. So grading has been classified from the G1 to the G4, depends on the visibility of the nuclei. So when the nuclei is absent or inconspicuous, even going on the high power of the 40X, it means the grade is lower, or G1. When the nuclei is present or it is visible when we go on the high power of the 40x, but it is not prominent on the 10x and on the lower power. So it is G2, while the G3 is that the uh, nucleoli is clearly conspicuous or clearly visible even on, going on, even on the low power, but there is no nuclear polymorphism or there is no uh, any differentiation which we will see in the G4. So in G4, the nuclei is completely visible and even being at the 10x, but there is a completely a nuclear polymorphism. Polymorphism means there is a difference in the sizes and the shapes of the nucleus. And sometimes there could be the presence of some rhabdoid or the sarcomatoid differentiation as well, which is absent in G3. So that is, that is the factor we can differentiate between the G3 and the G4. And remember, the clear cell renal cell carcinoma has the worst prognosis compared to the papillary and the chromophobe. And this type of the classification, with, which is depends on the visibility of the nuclei, it is only applicable for the clear cell carcinoma and the papillary renal cell carcinoma. It is not applicable on the chromosome renal cell carcinoma. So this is the one of the picture of the G3 clear cell carcinoma. This picture has been taken at the 10X. So here we can clearly see this nested or the alveolar type of the architecture, which contains the clear cells. And we can clearly see this rounded cherry red nucleoli present in all the nucleus. And, but there is no prominent nuclear polymorphism in between or among the cells, and there is no sarcomatite or the rhabdite type of differentiation we can see here. So that is the reason this case was signed out at the G3 grade. So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much.